the marina, but a beautiful night to start things off for LMU, and we are underway. The ball kicked beautifully forward, and LMU immediately denied a chance by the Bruins' contested ball right around the center of the pitch. And as soon as we got things started, LMU will force the turnover and give themselves the ball right back. I like LMU starting out aggressive here. You know, like we mentioned a, mi a minute ago, they haven't played in almost a year, whereas UCLA played just a few days ago. So I think these first few minutes are going to be really important if LMU can come out with that energy and not show too much rust. As you said, Alex, this team with a lot to prove here tonight and certainly a lot of raw talent, a lot of familiar faces. These guys are very well used to playing together here on the pitch. But, you know, how do those long off-season cobwebs affect their play here? Yeah, I mean, and they were picked to finish uh, first in the WCC in the preseason coaches poll, so expectations are high, which adds sort of that much more tension, that much more importance to every single second. How much difference a year makes from being picked to finish last to being picked to finish first the following year? Unbelievable. The ball goes out of bounds. will come right back LMU's way for the throw-in. And play resumes. Good pass into the middle. LMU trying to get it out of the corner. They'll recover back towards the sideline. Trying to run it into the box. The Bruins recover well, and they'll kick it nearly out of bounds on the sideline. Well played. They're going to try to keep it in. Working back now towards the center line, and LMU will steal it right back. Don't have the numbers offensively, though. Good heart defense, though, from the Bruins. That'll be a turnover right away. And the boys in blue will get the ball back. UCLA now starting off, trying to get it on to LMU's half of the pitch. LMU intercepts right away. Back and forth we go, hard play at the sideline. We saw it on the far side, now on the near side, out of bounds. It was off of Duhaney Williams, who had a stellar season last year. It was so fun to watch him. He was such a utility player, played a, a myriad of different positions. He was so versatile well as a midfielder. And led, led the team in goals last year, had five of them to lead the way for the Lions, including the uh, only goal in that NCAA tournament match against Seattle. At the forward slot this afternoon, wearing number seven on his jersey. He played out of the bottom left corner on your screen. And the Bruins will try to get some offense going. Haven't had a much, haven't had much possession time, I should say, down in LMU's part, and LMU will get it back. As you said, Alex, LMU coming out aggressive this evening. LMU trying to force the envelope. Try to create some offense, gets past his man on the far side. Open room to work with, but they'll collapse in the box. Bit of a desperation shot from the top corner, but it's a shot on goal nonetheless. I think that's just one of those situations where, you know, itching to get back out there, trying to create some offense. Maybe would have liked to see him send a few more passes, try to get a shot in the box rather than one from distance. They did have numbers on the top side, but elected for a little more aggressive approach. Ball headed. Out and LMU will recover defensively. UCLA try to get a shot at it, and they'll go straight on back to Jacob Jackson, who's going to air mail it out. He's got Christian Wood ready for it. Now contested at the end line, and at the center line, I should say, and LMU not happy with the change of possession call, but play resumes nonetheless. Bruins play back to Garces, who air mails it down. LMU's got the numbers, and UCLA wisely not going to risk the offsides call. They'll try to get it back towards the center, and the Bruins' defensive territory. UCLA now with a lone charge, and that's going to be a foul called nine out of ten times. LMU can't believe it, but from this angle, it certainly looked pretty clear. Of course, Alex, these things to be expected early on. LMU hasn't played in quite some time. It's going to be a chippy game to L.A. schools with a lot to prove on both ends. Yeah, and LMU, you know, Paul Crumpy's defense tends to play a pretty physical style, so that will result in some fouls, maybe some bookings from time to time, and something they have to be careful about down on the offensive end here. So there's the kick in towards the box, headed out beautifully by LMU. UCLA looking to try to get another shot at it. They'll work it out to the outside, but double teamed right away. Back and forth play is... Riley Furch is going tic-tac-toe with Andrew Pauli. And LMU trying to get it out. Little errant kick will give it right back to the Bruins. They'll get another shot at it. Now up top. 
Falkland all the way back to Garces. And UCLA is going to reset. Good pressure early on from LMU. They'll airmail it all the way down. A little bit of a desperation kick to get it out of trouble. But recovered well by the Bruins. They'll go up top. Now they control at the top corner of the box. Work it back towards the center. Stretching out that LMU defense, making them run for it early on. As you said, Alex, this UCLA team has already begun their play this season. LMU has not up until this point. So UCLA may be trying to capitalize on some early cobwebs. Yeah, and you know, it, that defense is kind of one of those areas where, you know, if you're too anxious, too overambitious in that first game back, you might try to jump something, make a mistake, let someone slip through. So far, LMU doing a nice job of holding strong. You know, that defense so important to the team last year went six matches without allowing a goal at one point. And a lot of the same uh, defenders are back, so it'll be important for them to kind of maintain what they had last year. It was not the only time these two teams have seen each other in the past, and of, of course they're excited to play against one another this evening. LMU itching to get back onto the pitch, as I'm sure most programs were in the longer than normal offseason caused by the global pandemic. UCLA is going to try to work it on back now. They had some good possession time, but as you said, Alex, that stout defense from LMU become a bit of a calling card. LMU is going to go for a bit of a chance for it here. Kicked all the way out. Ball's on side. Decreasing angle, though. It's going to be Dehaney Williams is going to try to work for it, and he's going to lose it, but a valiant effort nonetheless by the starting forward. Yep, trying to use Williams, a very fast player, and trying to use his speed to his advantage there, trying to get to the outside, but credit the UCLA defense for holding strong and not letting him get that angle. Yeah, we talk about LMU's defense, but on the offensive side, you know, a lot of times it looks like the play's not there, and then Dohaney Williams puts on the afterburners, and there he is. So certainly a force to be reckoned with. Keep an eye on number seven in white. So Justin Garces, tic-tac-toe, but the defense, hairy moment there is Williams and the rest of the LMU defense was trying to put some pressure on. Now LMU on the back foot is the Bruins with a full head of steam trying not to foul and it'll stay clean. Back and forth we go, top of the box, slide tackles in. No whistles so far, the refs letting them play. UCLA is gonna have to kick it back out. Harry moment there for LMU's defense, but they recovered well and now they'll get to take a little bit of a deep breath and recover with the throw in. Either way, hairy moment there for the defense, Alex. Oh, absolutely. There was a lot of lot of, conf lot of confusion, the rushing up all at once, but credit LMU for not getting over, over anxious and, and staying with the play. So early on, both sides having trouble penetrating the box. LMU does have a shot on goal credited. We saw Williams just a moment ago try to force the issue again, but UCLA yet to take a proper shot on Jacob Jackson wearing number 98. He was stellar last season, Alex. He got put in some tough positions and came out on top. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a surprising thing. He was not projected to be the starting goalie at the beginning of the year and just kind of rose up during that six match unbeaten or no goal streak rather that I talked about earlier and sort of held it all the way through. We often talk about players developing over the off season, but that development can happen during the season as well. UCLA now going to try to force the envelope. Thought they had an open man, but not quite. LMU's defense gives them the corner, but shows them the back door pretty quickly. And Jacob Jackson will gobble it up and take his time recovering to the center of the box. This time LMU with a chance to try to create some offense going down the pitch. Air mailed all the way down to Williams. Corralled well, but double teamed immediately. Great defensive stand there by Longmere. And a cross nearly headed in. A great effort there offensively by the Lions. I think it was Williams with the pass. Williams, Bastion Overly in on it as well. And of course, off the head of Ronaldo Brown. You mentioned Alex, the only new face on this starting roster. LMU going with the veteran squad this evening. And, and it makes sense, you know, you in First game of the season makes a lot of sense to have those players out there who are kind of already know the system, know what to do under the uh, game time lights. And so far, they've been doing pretty well. LMU, a chance to recover defensively. They'll go likely back to Jacob Jackson, and they do. We get a glimpse now at, at Jackson, and we saw Gerardo Lopez run through as well. The LMU now a chance to get it to the center line, and they do play at the sidelines. The Bruins 
who start jogging backwards. This LMU team, if you let them get a good run, they will punish you. There's so many players that are not only fast, but quick on their feet, and that distinction is key in this game. And maybe a little bit too fancy there at the end line. LMU trying to get it out of the corner, and they do. So hoping for the corner, but it'll be a throw in for the Bruins, correction on that. So try to get a little bit too fancy with it near the sideline, Alex, and you know maybe that's just some early play jitters of going, again, the first game of the season after a long time out. Yeah, definitely, and also UCLA's defense is doing a really nice job of swarming, sending multiple guys, because like basically every line is getting double teamed right now, so credit the, uh, the Bruins for being aggressive in that sense. Yeah, the Pac-12, a very high-powered conference, and UCLA no stranger to winning matches. LMU, good play at the center, is going to give their offense a chance. Get it up towards the midfield. Slide tackle, no good against the quick feet of Williams. Cross to the center. Nearly, Williams recovers, flies in out of nowhere. Don't have the numbers, but nearly an opportunity there. It was heartbreak hotel as Ronaldo Brown had his back turned and maybe could have gotten a boot on it. But not quite either way. Third shot on goal for the Lions. Still goose eggs for the Bruins. Still tied at zero. With about 11.20 elapsed in this game. And UCLA taking their sweet time getting it up towards their midfield. Back and forth they go. Garces. And now they start to advance. Oh, not quite. Spoke too soon. LMU intercepts nearly right away. A pass towards the middle, nearly. Look how quick UCLA is on the defense. Fancy footwork, though, from Brown. Gets tangled up and stolen. Ronaldo Brown, you can see very quickly why he made his way onto the starting lineup. Ball off the official. Little juggling there from the gentleman in yellow this afternoon, as I believe Ronaldo Brown is going to Force the whistle for just a moment as he laces up the boot and gets back into the swing of things. Ball now going to be played from near the center circle. And UCLA wants to start things off a little quicker than the officials would like to allow. And now we'll get things rolling once again. So interesting there, Alex. UCLA taking their sweet time, almost baiting LMU, and it nearly worked out poorly for them. Yeah, I mean, sometimes um, defense or sort of those, those offensive players playing defense can sort of lure the, the backs to sleep and create a counterattack. We saw that ha I saw that happen a few times against LMU last year, uh, kind of a place where they slipped up a little bit and they're sort of taking it to the Bruins in that sense. Williams again with the drag race to the end line. Corner kick. Line. It'll be a corner kick for LMU, their first of the match. I believe that's Bastian Oberly down there ready to take it, another key player for the Lions in there. NCAA tournament appearance right here at Sullivan Field a little less than a year ago. Oberly, one of my favorite players on this team, only scored four goals last season, but every single one of them was spectacular. Almost got to liken him to someone who's more of a facilitator, a huge, huge factor both offensively and defensively on this team. And despite the fact that his scoring numbers may not reflect that, there's a reason why he's in that starting lineup. Yeah, and he just and he knows exactly when to come out with a shot. You know, like four goals. Grand scheme of things, that's not a ton. But, you know, he had a couple of brilliant free kicks in the midst of that. LMU trying to gain possession and stop the Bruins' roll. And Christian Wood sliding on in there to interrupt the Bruins' progress. They'll have to go back for it. Tic-tac-toe with the defense. Longmere holding on to it. Gets pressure from Oberly. Let's it go back to Garces. Garces. Now they start to roll it up the pitch. LMU putting the pressure on very early and great play towards the center of the pitch, forcing UCLA to work the sideline. And LMU really making it difficult for UCLA to start any kind of meaningful transition, Alex. Yeah, I mean, they've had so much trouble just getting the ball past midfield. In a game where possession time truly matters and UCLA now trying for an opportunity, but intercepted pretty quickly. LMU's gonna have to play it from the corner. They'll go back to Jackson, who's given pressure early on, but forces it out. Jacob Jackson so calm under pressure, part of the reason why he's in this starting squad. Bruin hits the deck, but no call. And LMU's gonna try to force the envelope. Looks like Cervantes was going for it, but kicked away. 
It'll be Lions ball off the throw in. As we just round the 15 minute mark in this game, three shots on goal for the Lions, none for the Bruins. Lions bears oh my, Alex, tonight here at Sullivan. Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. <laughs> 15 minutes gone by, LMU looking to force some more offense. They've done a good job of it so far. Their defense has been stout and really made things difficult for UCLA, as you mentioned. High arcing ball. And it'll go out of bounds for UCLA off the throw in, but LMU doing a good job of interrupting their momentum. Eric Vaughlin with the throw in. We hear calls from the bench to hold, make it difficult for them. LMU certainly doing a good job of that so far. We can see the same thing again, Alex. UCLA really having a difficult time trying to force the envelope. We've seen them be aggressive at times, but it's LMU who has been the main aggressor in this matchup. We can see there, just as they try to make a run to the center, they're getting back to Garces multiple times. I think Garces has had more touches than just about anyone else on this midfield squad. And that's a dangerous one right to the middle, but Overly lets him go. And now a contested ball at the middle. Back and forth we go. Alex Lyons not giving an inch. Yeah, and what I love about this, Jonathan, is it's great team defense. It's not just the backs. It's not just the forwards. Everyone's stepping up and doing their part right now. Bachlin now trying to get it towards the center. Good pressure from the backside from LMU. Furch going towards the corner. Fancy footwork and loses his feet. It was nearly potentially a good look as Duty thought he had it and then lost his footing. Gives LMU a chance to go back again. They'll kick it back. Didn't have the numbers offensively to try to push the envelope, but they are certainly wearing down this Bruins offense. Yeah, I mean, you see that sort of a little bit of a self-inflicted error on that last one on first was trying to get it to Duty, I believe. But uh, that's one of those mistakes when the defense has been so strong that you do get those little slip throughs, those find those little cracks in the defense. You've just got to take advantage of it. Well, credit to Furch. I think he did see that little crack in duty, I think, would have had that low side. But again, lost his footing and denied the opportunity. And the Lions so quick to recover defensively, you can't really get away with a little slip up like that. Contested ball around the middle of the pitch. And that one will sail out of bounds with the Marina Bay wind coming in here, maybe playing a factor in the travel of the ball. Maybe not. Christian Wood will have the throw in for the Lions. Just a shade under in 18 minutes gone by. In a relatively slow paced game, LMU came out of the gate very strong, forcing the envelope. They've had a corner kick and as we mentioned, three shots. But Jacob Jackson hasn't seen too, too much action. Garz is on the other hand, credited with a save. And the battle continues, LMU despite not having the numbers defensively, making it very difficult for them. Big time play there from Dehaney Williams, who three on one ended up almost winning that matchup and giving Garza's a run for his money. It'll recover now all the way down the pitch to Jacob Jackson wearing the orange jersey this evening. He's got loads of space to work with the Bruins, not forcing the pressure as much as LMU has. Now they start to turn it on. Gerardo Lopez able to get it out, and the ball will go out of bounds. The Bruins quick off the throw in. They want the center. Recognized a gap, as you said, in the defense, but LMU collapses so quickly. Again, Alex, we're seeing this defense punish any little lapse, any error, and even on the quick restart there off the throw in, UCLA wasn't able to find the space. Yeah, I mean, they have a lot of, LMU has a lot of really smart players who just kind of know exactly where to be on the field at all times. Guys like Christian Wood, Nick Deshaux where you can just put them out there and basically always trust them to do the right thing. We're seeing that right now. I think he used the phrase team defense, Alex. I think that's just about the perfect way to describe the way this team is playing at the moment. The help side is quick. The slides are fast. The rotations are tack sharp. Bastion Overly, little cross towards the center. Big shot there, not quite. I think it was actually going to be a cross towards Ronaldo Brown but a little bit too far forward for the forward to corral. Ball played now towards the corner. LME is gonna try to advance it up the sideline. Top left of your screen, big long shot there. LMU putting on a tremendous amount of pressure on this Bruins defense at the moment. 
LMU's defense has had their hands full. There's another cross that's contested well. This time they try to get it all the way back down to Dehaney Williams, but not quite enough under it. So despite not a ton of penetration in the box, LMU creating some good offense, still discredited with three shots on goal, but a slew of nearly successful crosses on that last possession. UCLA, UCLA is now gonna have to try what they've struggled with is to get it up, up the pitch. And right on cue, LMU's defense has been tough on him. And Furch wants a foul called near the center line, but the ball is all the way now down in LMU territory. A wide, call it a desperation shot from the Bruins. Eric Bockland will be credited with that one. And Jacob Jackson didn't really even chase it as he saw. Credit to the Bruins for trying to create some offense, but LMU's defense has been a challenge for him so far. I mean, even when LMU's not possessing the ball right now, it feels like they're controlling the pace of play and keeping UCLA on their toes. I think, Jonathan, the phrase you use a lot is hearing footsteps, and that's exactly what LMU's doing right now, making, a lot, making UCLA hear footsteps. Quick change of possession off Ronaldo Brown as he got tangled up a little bit, and UCLA will get a chance to kick it away, and they do. Your point there, Alex, yes, absolutely. I think a lot of that is due to the speed of the defensive recovery from LMU. Despite creating gaps and often playing pretty wide, they can collapse so quickly. You gotta tip the hat to the athleticism of this Lions squad. So ball now played in the middle. Overly, he's got options. We'll kick it back. A long shot all the way back and nearly to Haney Williams. Will he get it? A beautiful save from Justin Garza as the ball will get kicked out. How he saved that, I do not know. A fantastic defensive play from the goalkeeper for the Bruins and UCLA will wisely get it out of trouble or try to at least, but Gerardo Lopez will keep the Lions' chances alive. A beautifully drawn up play there from LMU's offense and Williams nearly got it in off what was already a good shot from downtown. And LMU trying to get offensive power back and UCLA trying to get it out of the danger zone. And now they're gonna try a run of their own. Certainly don't have the numbers defensively, but they do have the speed and Jacob Jackson will let his defense corral that one and get it out of bounds. And even though he's trying to get it out of bounds, I think he'll steal it himself. Down the pitch he goes. Christian Wood with a great defensive stand there. Little Bob Ross happy accident as he tried to kick it out of bounds, ended up stealing the ball himself. Not, not very often you get to reference Bob Ross on a soccer broadcast, but <laughs> here we are. Now, just going back to that last play by Williams, I thought he had it in for sure. You could see him immediately sort of point, trying to signal that's a goal, that crossed, but didn't quite get there. If this was the MLS, you would be sure seeing, you know, five, ten minutes of replays from every cam camera angle imaginable. But that was a fantastic defensive save from Justin Garces, who was actually credited with two saves on that. He gobbled up the first long shot from the top of the box, and then when Williams came in off the cross on the recovery, gobbled that one up as well. He extended that right arm. But the ball goes back to Garces once again, his defense once again having trouble getting it up the pitch. And Elmiu just patiently waiting. You can even see Dehaney Williams with arms on his hips for just a, a split second there. Now UCLA tries to tempt the middle, and they do successfully. We've seen this is where they've had the most trouble, and again, they get it taken away right away. This stout LMU defense flexing its muscles at the minute as we round the 24-minute mark. Five shots on goal, a corner kick for the Lions. Still goose eggs on the final tally sheet, though. But LMU has had... A heck of a couple looks. Williams now to the middle is going to play the far sideline, and he does. You can hear on the on field mic, Shockey's coming, and coming he is. But LMU will slow down, try to get it into the box off the cross, and Brown was contested well on that one, so credit UCLA's defense. And now they're going to try a run on the far side. LMU for once doesn't have the numbers, but here they come. A little bit of a desperation chip cross. Won't quite go, and another defensive stand for the Lions. 
So Alex, what does UCLA need to do at this point to try to start penetrating LMU's brick wall of a defense? That's tough. I think they've had their most success uh, when they've when they've worked the outside and then try to get back in the middle. So sort of that outside in approach, because I think the uh, the wings are probably slightly weaker for LMU defensively than the middle. So if UCLA can get to the outside, they'll probably have their best chances. And kind of getting an example of that right now with this corner, and we'll see what they can make out of it. You can see UCLA trying to stretch out this LMU defense, but again with the speed and athleticism of these players. It's hard to do. Here's the first corner kick for the Bruins. Air milled in. A little bit too far off the header and contested well by the Lions. It'll be a foot race to the sideline. It will go out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for the Bruins right away. There's duty with the throw in. And starts things off right away. Contested by the Lions immediately. And UCLA is going to have to recover to the middle of the pitch. And now they start to work downhill. Top right of your screen, now back to the middle. UCLA slowly and methodically working around, back towards the center line as their defense goes to work. LMU again pushing back the UCLA offense, not really giving them many opportunities here. UCLA still with a zero in the shots on goal tally category. Defensively though, Justin Garces has three saves as he faced an onslaught from the Lions offense. And this defense has used him a lot to try to get the offense started, but has been pretty unsuccessful up to this point, Alex. It really, it really has. A credit LMU for being just really strong and really steady and not kind of slipping up physically or mentally that much so far. The Lions trying to disrupt play again, and they do. The Bruins have not been stellar in transition despite having some really, really strong defensive play this evening. The Lions have certainly made them work for it. The Bruins, though, not doing too terribly in terms of possession time overall. But LMU's defense has been very, very sound. They'll get another chance for it. A long shot goes over the top of the crossbar. And Justin Garces jumped for it. Maybe a foot or so off the mark. Second time we've seen a strong shot from the outside. I think that one is a little farther back, though, than the one we've seen before. So Garces goes to work. The defense will start to work downhill once again. What can they do this time in transition? They've been slow and methodical. It's allowed LMU the chance to recover. It seems like the times they've had success getting the ball down to LMU's side of the pitch is when they've forced the issue. So there it is, UCLA trying to avoid the offsides call, and they do. They'll get it back momentarily, but stolen away again by LMU. There's Nick Dosho, one of the strongest defenders on this team. So UCLA will maintain possession for the time being. What can they do? Good little deceptive cross there all the way now towards the center of your screen. Ahmed Longmere, who's been pretty slow to pass, but trying to explore his options at the moment. We've seen the trouble that UCLA has had in transition, so he's trying to make sure he picks his passes wisely. UCLA is still struggling around the perimeter. We've got a Bruin down on the far side. It looks potentially like it could be Riley Furch back to his feet quickly. UCLA will Try again towards the center of the pitch. Here we go once again, Alex. UCLA struggling to get past this LMU defense. The Bruins again slow in the transition. LMU recovers well, kicks it out of harm's way. And will it be a throw in? Yes. So the Bruins again gonna get another shot at it, but this time from a lot farther back than before. Alex, UCLA, despite having success relatively when they try to force the issue, is not really doing a great job of that at the moment. Yeah, no, it's been a little bit inconsistent for sure, although they appear to be picking up the pace in the last few minutes. So UCLA steals it right back. Bastian Oberly now exploring his options. Big, long cross down to the corner. Not quite enough. There's Dehaney Williams playing on that opposite side. They've swapped places 
with Narciso Cervantes for the time being. Ball all the way down, and Gerardo Lopez looked like he had a, a shot at it, but give it to Jacob Jackson, and LMU will try to work downhill now from their end. You know, Jonathan, in terms of the LMU defense, we've been talking about the, the speed and the athleticism, and of course that's an important part of it, but thus far their defensive IQ has been fantastic. The, you see the smarts of these veteran players of kind of knowing where to be and what to do on the defensive end, and it's really worked out. Absolutely. I think UCLA has telegraphed a couple of the passes, and that's going to hurt you against this LMU defense, and a header nearly in, and it is. Make it 1-0 LMU. The newest face on this LMU roster puts one in the back of the net. Welcome to the Lions, Ronaldo Brown. How about that for a first goal? A very well-placed cross into the box, and Brown, only 5'6", not the tallest player. You know, it's funny, the player whose spot he took in the lineup was the 6'4", Francis Avos. But on that one, getting up, jumping up there, and knocking it in, and... He's just maybe a little bit emotional maybe over scoring his first collegiate goal. I think he is indeed. I mean, what a special thing and all the trials and tribulation that this team and every college athletics program has faced has come out and raises the finger up to the sky. A fantastic job and hats off to you, sir. Well done, Ronaldo Brown. A great way to start the season for the Lions. Yeah, it's him and his, uh, he's from originally from, uh, Kingston, Jamaica, uh, native, a Jamaican native, much like uh, his fellow forward, Dehaney Williams, and a junior college transfer from uh, Northwest, Northeast Texas, rather, Community College, and finally getting his NCAA debut and scoring the first goal of the season for the Lions. That's a, that's a great story. 30 minutes into your college soccer career, not a bad way to start for Ronaldo Brown. He was assisted by Cervantes and Oberly on that one off the cross. Great team effort, as we said. LMU doing a great job of playing as a unit. That's something they've struggled with in years past, really tried to tighten it up last season. It worked well for them. And Alex, they may have a new dangerous offensive threat here. Yeah, how about that? I mean, one of the great things about LMU's offense last year was how many different players contributed. 12 players, 12 different players scored at least one goal, uh, which is really exceptional. You get more than a starting 11 that can score a goal. And it seems like if these first 30 minutes are any indication that we're, we're going to see much of the same this year. Contested ball at the middle. Exactly. I, I couldn't agree more, Alex. And, you know, to fill the shoes, as you said, of Francis Avos is no small task. But Ronaldo Brown, we've seen him take quite a few looks this evening so far. He had three shots on goal, and that last one went in. Brown and Avos, though, very different players. Like we mentioned, Avos, nearly a foot taller. Uses, obviously he's going to use his height to his advantage there. Whereas Brown, you know, smaller, going to be a little more crafty, kind of get positioning and find his goals that way. We've seen speed and quickness with the feet work really, really well on the defensive end, but offensively obviously works well too. Bastion Overly, one of the greatest examples of that. Dehaney Williams also no stranger to the fancy footwork. Contested ball again. No sister Cervantes will get it to Gerardo Lopez. They'll get it back to their keeper and Jacob Jackson will boot it out of trouble. Overly now trying to recover, a little bicycle kick off the ground and UCLA will steal it away momentarily as they settle back. But to your point there, Alex, absolutely. I think that the variety of play that they have here is gonna be very dangerous to cover early on, especially down the road in this season. So UCLA is gonna try to play the corner. They'll have to get it upfield if they want a good angle and they do. Pauses momentarily. About 15 yards from the top of the box. A little cross up, maybe too far forward, and Gerardo Lopez will gobble that one up, no problem. There's Andrew Pauly, who is going back and forth with it momentarily. Substitutions for the Bruins coming in number 19, Luke. So substitutions Jonathan. for the Bruins. There's for the Bruins. Excuse me. Yes, Alex. Uh, you announce the substitutions first, and then I'll make my point. Couple fresh faces for the Bruins. Getting number 19 into this game as well. And didn't quite catch the last one. We'll, we'll get that to you in just a moment. So Luke Bone checking into this game, wearing number 19 for the Bruins. There's the kick from the corner for UCLA. And 
Bastion Overly nearly loses it. UCLA might get another shot at it, and they do. Jacob Jackson now going to face his first real offensive threat of the night. Handles that one no problem. Had to do a little bit of a stutter step as he didn't know if it was going to go for the cross or deflect back towards him, but read it perfectly. Jonathan, if I can just go back to the point uh, I was making earlier, a lot of times last season, LMU would score a goal in the in the first half and then just kind of wait back for a while, get a lot more conservative with their game plan. And occasionally it worked out, but other times it didn't. And I, I want to see LMU remain the aggressors here. Don't get complacent. We saw as, as the season progressed and they got further towards that NCAA appearance and into it, that they did start to be a little bit more aggressive. Some rough play. Definitely. And I think Dehaney Williams going to get called for that one. UCLA now a chance to kick it away. You can hear on the, the mics around the pitch. They're trying to figure out exactly what the call was, but play resumes nonetheless. UCLA trying to get it down. And they're being a little bit more aggressive in transition. Now in the middle, they're going to kick it back. UCLA trying to get a good spot to start to work their offense. Find the gaps in the defense. LMU isn't giving them many looks, though. Now two shots on goal, though, for the Bruins. Correction, still zero shots on goal. I was looking at the corner kick numbers, my mistake. UCLA trying to work downhill. Big cross all the way down. It's going to be past the goal and out of bounds. So Jacob Jackson will gobble that one up and take his time recovering as play resets. So Steven Anderson checking in for LMU wearing number 23. Some fresh faces on the pitch for the Lions. Fresh faces both in terms of this game and the LMU soccer program. Anderson, the first freshman to see uh, pitch time tonight. Overly caught out of bounds, but deflected off a of Bruins boot, so LMU will get a chance to work it once again. Christian Wood will have the throw in, looking for a cutting teammate. Might have to settle for up top. UCLA playing stout defense. He'll go and try to work off the clever feet of Ronaldo Brown. Brown is tied up and goes down. Frustration immediately from Eric Vaughlin, who gets called with that one. He had Brown pretty well wrapped up, and Brown did his best to try to recover. UCLA visibly frustrated after that one, and Bastion Oberly is going to get a chance to kick it away uncontested. Oberly, as I mentioned a little earlier, scored two goals on free kicks last season. He's, he is their free kick artist, so let's see what he can do here. We mentioned one of the most dangerous players out here for the Lions. Kind of goes about his business quietly, but strikes when he need him to. Right in towards the center. The Lions going to get a good look at it now at the top of the box. Trying to box out themselves. Contested play. UCLA recovers well, and they force LMU all the way back to the center of the pitch. Great defensive stand there from the Bruins. Yeah, definitely. They were, they were very aggressive there. Stepped up. Didn't wait back for anything. Got right in the middle of it. Almost committed a foul there, taking down, might have been Wood, can't see for sure on my monitor, but. It's always, there. always, always risky when you go down in the box. Use physicality to get the ball back, and if there's no call, you can't fault it. The refs haven't called too, too much tonight, so they're letting them play here at Sullivan, and a yellow card awarded in this one, just as I say it. How about that for a commentator's curse? We'll get you exactly <laughs> who that was called on. The previous foul was called on Ben Raveno. We'll get you the yellow card in just a moment. Looked like it was play off the ball, perhaps a little bit mouthy. It had shot over the goal. Oohs and ahs from the few in attendance here tonight. No crowd at Sullivan Field, but a couple of the other student athletes from different LMU programs coming to watch socially distanced. The yellow card was on Tommy Silva. 
coming exactly the 39th minute. So Justin Garces is now taking his time to come on in. So Ronaldo Brown will take his first seat of the evening as he's subbed out for a moment. He'll get to rest the legs that have produced the first goal of this 2021 season for LMU. UCLA kicks it all the way down. That one will sail out of bounds, so a missed opportunity there for the Bruins to keep trying to force the issue, but LMU's defense in transition has been stout enough that they haven't really given them many looks. And again, it's been a defense first game for LMU, you know, just and using their offense, or using the defense rather to lead into the offense and staying steady on the back end. It's worked for them so far, and Alex, as you mentioned, they can't get complacent, though we've seen how that can hurt them late in games. But LMU is at the moment looking to stay aggressive. Some fresh faces out there on the pitch and trying to do their darndest to make life difficult for their crosstown rivals. Will that be a foul called on LMU? Yes, it will. It was Nathan Franco, by the way, that replaced Ronaldo Brown, so welcome him to the pitch for his first minutes of this season. As we mentioned, or as you mentioned earlier, Alex, UCLA has played already this season. LMU has not. But making life difficult for the Bruins is balls contested at the center of the box and kicked away easily by the Lions. There's Lopez and Dosho on that one and joined defensively by Christian Wood, who now gets a shot at getting the ball over the midfield line. Not quite. But LMU going to recover defensively. Don't usually take too much time to do this. As it stands, LMU up 1-0. Just about 41 minutes into this contest. As we near the halfway mark, Gerardo Lopez will, will recover. And try to get it down the pitch. LMU looking for one or two final offensive pushes before heading into the locker room for halftime. Now towards the center of the box, long cross. Not to recover to Wood. Wood working with it on the far side. Entangled up the Bruins, not giving an inch and they'll take that opportunity away. So LMU, if they want to get another shot in before halftime, are gonna have to strip the ball and try it once again. And they do. UCLA will take it right on back. Ahmed Longmere able to corral it before going out of bounds and gives the Bruins a chance to work with just a couple minutes left here as the clock winds down in the half. So Longmere with a long pass. Ball now towards the center a little bit too far. LMU might get another shot at it and they will. They're gonna have to get it all the way down the pitch but they've got a little bit of time to work with. UCLA not happy about it and they're letting them know with some tough pressure. And all of a sudden, UCLA playing very aggressive in transition. A little bit too aggressive, and LMU will get the ball back on the foul. So Alex, as the clock winds down, what does LMU need to do here to give themselves one final push? Just just stay aggressive, send a lot of people downfield, uh, and keep up that uh, that defense from the forwards. And they've been forcing UCLA into mistakes. Nathan Franco, in particular, played great individual defense. Uh, forcing one of the UCLA defenders into a bad pass. So if they do give the ball back, that's something to look out for. LMU is trying to get it out of the sideline. UCLA snuck it away, contested ball now, and LMU is gonna have a turnaround chance with the numbers straight into the center of the goal, and Justin Garces was ready for that one. So maybe that's still a great look for Anderson, though. Powerful kick. Garces barely was able to handle it, so. He wasn't able to get a full hand on. He kind of just blocked it with his torso, but still in the right place at the right time. Garces has had his hands full. He's only let in one goal off of nine shots so far in this first half. UCLA still in this half has not had a single shot on goal, Alex. So Christian Wood 
LMU not slowing down. They don't want to hold at the half. They want another chance. They want to keep on rolling. Back and forth we go. Lopez all the way back. LMU's defense now going to try to get it on down towards the midfielders. Play at the sideline. LMU struggled here a little bit in transition at times. As we get the 60-second warning, LMU who leads this game one to nil. Looking for one final push as we're under 60 seconds to go in the half. LMU taking their time in transition though. We've seen this from the Bruins. Now we're seeing it from LMU. Long pass intended for Lopez is gonna go to Wood. Back to Lopez. LMU looking to play in the final 30. All the way I think back at this to point. I think at this point they just don't want to be over aggressive and commit a dumb turnover that would lead to a UCLA rush. So 20 seconds, there's the airmail pass. What can LMU do on the offensive side? Headed by UCLA. Now played at the midfield. Oberly with 10 to go. And as it's kicked out, LMU will lose their final opportunity, but lead this one one to zero going into the half. It was nine shots on goal to start it with a corner kick, two corner kicks for the Ruins, but no attempts successfully on the goal. So Jacob Jackson, despite having his hands full, has not had to be in a position of making a save. We'll step aside momentarily before returning to the action. You're watching LMU Lions men's soccer on the LMU Sports Network and the WCC Sports Network powered by Watch Stadium. Alex should be a good second half if the Lions continue uh, with, with not only the scoring, but their stout defense as well. Yeah, they came out really strong, really aggressive, took the fight to the Bruins rather the other way around, which is what you want to see in that first game of the season. And we'll see if they can keep that going. You know, now that both teams have had a few minutes to catch their breath. We'll get play going in just a moment. 45 fresh minutes on the clock. Bruins will start things off. As we said, LMU up to a 1-0 lead after Ronaldo Brown in his first game as a Lion. Struck first blood. And UCLA, after conferring at the halftime, will try to do a better job of playing in transition. LMU going to try to not get trapped on the sideline as much, not commit as many fouls. We'll see what the second half brings. So UCLA working the ball. Now on LMU's side of the pitch. And they once again go back to their defense. LMU trying to contest the ball and create some offensive looks for themselves early on. An early foul will give UCLA the ball right back. Excuse me, give LMU the ball. So an unforced error gives LMU a chance at an early push. We saw them come and start the first half very aggressively, Alex, and let's see if they can do the same here in the second. Yeah, I mean, I said after the first few minutes, it's great to see that they were being so aggressive, and then they just kind of maintained it through most of the rest of the half. So if they can maintain it in the second half as well, they should be in a good place. Yeah, something we talked about at halftime is keeping the pressure on. This team has struggled a little bit with that in seasons past, and even last season when they enjoyed so much overall success. There's always little areas you can improve on, and They've certainly had a long offseason to work on it. It seems like they are back in fine form, so let's see what they can do here in the second half. LMU trying to give themselves a look and get it down towards the box. A long cross, that one maybe a little bit of a far cry, but nearly a shot contested early on. And we've got two players down that look like they may have collided. A second late shot came in, but went wide. It's 11 total shots now. We'll make sure everyone's okay. You never like to see anyone down on the pitch for this long. Both players up under their own power. Looks like on the Bruins side, it may have been Ali Deviser. Correction, I think it was actually Ben Raveno. It was Raveno indeed, and yep. he'll get the ball back and both players back on their feet, good to see. You never like to see anyone get hurt. Garces, who had his hands full, you now trying to start some offense from just in front of the net. Long pass all the way down the pitch. LMU will let that one trickle out of bounds. UCLA now with a quick restart. We saw them do this early on and nearly give themselves a good look. That one goes all the way back to the midline, though. So despite the fact that UCLA had some numbers in the middle, 
They want to go back and reset. LMU making it difficult for them as they have all game long. And LMU is livid as another lion hits the turf. And we'll see who it is. They're conferring with the officials. Some passionate discussion. LMU calling for a yellow card. It's Dylan Shockey who hit the turf hard and was seeming to be in pain now back up on his feet. Albeit with a little bit of a limp and a hop, skip and a jump and he's back. And the officials clarifying everything. No extracurricular activities, although we look like we may have had some for a moment. And after all said and done, LMU will, will get the ball back. They want to change the personnel though before that. So Alex Chippy so far here in the second half. Yeah, both teams just trying to maintain that aggression or increase that aggression from the first half. Well, again, we mentioned LMU can't get into too much foul trouble. Already had another one called on him in this half. UCLA adding to their tally as well as, as we just saw. So physicality certainly not lost here in the second 45 minute period. It'll be a slower restart than normal. That we began the sub for the Bruins here. Looked like Silva was coming out. I believe it is indeed. It'll be number 15 for the boys in blue. And the Bruins will keep it going as they try to work downhill. They're gonna be forced up against the sideline, but get it back to the middle wisely. Open up the defense just a little bit. And that one, though, off the header, a little bit too wide, wider than they would have liked, and LMU's gonna gobble it up. Jacob Jackson will get another shot at it. So Jacob Jackson hasn't seen as much action as Justin Garces has, and that's to say the least. But certainly a very, very capable goaltender. As you mentioned early on, Alex, he, he's not someone who was projected to start the season, but as the season progressed, really made a case for himself and seems to be comfortable in that starting slot now. Yeah, I mean, it was one of the just, at first it was just one of those cases of kind of rolling with the hot hand, rolling with the player who was sort of performing the best both during the games and in practice, and it evolved into him just being the steady guy they could always count on. But stability, certainly a key factor in this strong LMU defense. UCLA again trying to play in transition. Perch to the middle and denied, and that one will go nearly out of bounds. Good play at the end line. UCLA able to keep it alive. Now they get it back up top, inching closer towards the box. UCLA struggling to get in, though. LMU, again, playing strong on the defensive side. They're sliding so quick. Their defensive recovery is something to behold and they take it away once again they'll give themselves a full head of steam and that one just a little bit too far in front jack Sauls nearly had a look but to avoid the offsides had to put on the brakes for just a moment he'll come back at it and try to steal away with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder nearly had a good look he would have had the majority of the right side of the pitch to work with yeah, it didn't didn't quite work out. Pass was a little long, but I loved the idea there. They, they got the steal, got the turnover, and that was a really nice counterattack. Just couldn't quite execute it. UCLA again working slow on the defense to start their transition game. Narcissa Cervantes hits the turf but recovers. Of course, with a little bit of moisture in the air, the grass could be a little slippery tonight. And Cervantes has played pretty much every minute of this ball game. UCLA again struggling to get it over the midfield line. And they did for just a moment, but headed out of bounds, and it'll advance themselves all the way up deep in LMU territory. Trying to play the corner, they're gonna have to play the sideline instead. LMU trying to get it back down to Sauls, who's backed up and gonna have to juggle it into free space, and that one kicked a little bit too far. And air mailed into the stands. No fans to catch it though right now. And now UCLA trying to start to force the envelope a little bit more, Alex.
We saw the Bruins be pretty lax early on about trying to get it downfield. The LMU's defense was pretty impeccable early on and has been so far here too. A long shot attempt. We just get Justin Garces thinking, maybe having some flashbacks to the first half. As you mentioned, Jonathan, UCLA definitely the aggressors in this half, but on two different occasions now, we've seen it lead to a turnover and LMU counterattack because they don't have enough defenders back. And even though neither one's worked out for the Lions, that's something to keep an eye out. Well, LMU's speed has been so quick. That one well contested by the defense and Jacob Jackson doesn't have to worry about that too much. We've talking, or we, we've spoken about the LMU defense. Talking is not a word. Uh, <laughs> we've spoken about the LMU defense at length this evening. and. A lot of that is due to the guys out on the pitch, but Jacob Jackson has a lot to do with that as well. In goal, you are the leader of the defense. His communication, his leadership has really proven to be an amazing point of stability for this Lions team. It'll be another corner kick for the Bruins. This will be their third of the match. Right into LMU territory, headed away by the Lions. They're gonna try to get it out of trouble. Cervantes, can he keep it alive? He'll get it all the way out to Jack Sauls, who's double teamed immediately. Sauls tries to keep it alive, but hands it right back with some confusion. He quite literally handed it off to the Bruins. So it looks like it'll be a change of possession. LMU will now have a chance to start things off. That was a late whistle where they do get the foul. It looked like Sauls was definitely being held and kind of manhandled a little bit. So it took a while, but I do think that was the right call. Well, Alex, your eagle eye was, was better than mine. That, that whistle was a day late and a dollar short for sure. But LMU does get the ball back and a chance to create some offense now. Cervantes trying to get it towards the top of the box. is going to have to kick it back out. Dosho playing up quite a lot. Back out, LMU's offense fairly crowded on the sideline. Dylan Shockey trying to play with it. They're gonna have to go all the way back to Lopez, who gets it forward. Intercepted by the Bruins now with a chance to counter. UCLA, who had numbers for a brief second, now gonna have to yield to the Lions, who take it away once again. Contested header, the Bruins. Back and forth we go. Looks like UCLA will control at the sideline. Top of your screen, nearing the left-hand side. LMU trying to back them up against the sideline. You can hear Crumpy say, no fouls, team. Wants LMU to keep it clean, and they do. Nine total fouls for the Lions in this ball game. Six now for the Bruins. That one will go out of bounds. And LMU will get another shot at it. Jonathan, I want to go back to something from earlier in that rush for UCLA. Showed you the value of Nick Deshaux leading the offense on one and kind of making that pass into the middle towards the box and then heading all the way back to get into position to make the header and slow down UCLA's run. I mean, he is such a steady player for this team, such a valuable part of it. And he's a redshirt senior this year, and he is going to be sorely missed at the end of this season. Well, don't let the positions listed on the roster fool you. All of these players so capable and so versatile. We saw it with Francis Avos last season. We saw it specifically with Duhaney Williams, who played exceptionally as a forward, but a lot of times edged back as kind of playing more towards the midfield. Did a great job of it. As you said there, Alex, Nick Deshaux coming up and starting off the offensive stand for LMU. Yeah, so all and these... All of I these was gonna say, uh, after you keep talking at the same time. I was going to say, just speaking of versatility, let's talk for a minute about uh, Mel Kaliskan. You know, um, one of those players who kind of plays in that defensive midfield, defensive or deep, deep holding midfield kind of position. He can play some defense. He can lead an offensive rush. So many things he's capable of. I mean, rein, reigning WCC Freshman of the Year, just such a valuable uh, piece of this Lions team on both sides of the ball. Yeah, we talk about that versatility. Kind of the need for just about everyone, maybe aside from the keeper, to be a versatility player and a utility player, I should say. This one's air mailed in. All the way from Jacob Jackson, a whistle. We'll give it right back to the Bruins. Yeah, that was a good call, LMU. Couldn't tell who it was from 
from this angle, but player definitely pushed off to try to gain position. So the Bruins will try to start it again as we are nearing the 40 is 58 minute mark. Excuse me. So just under an hour gone by in this one. In the first 45, LMU really controlled the pace of play. It's been pretty back and forth here, to be honest, in the second. So UCLA doing a good job of maintaining more possession. LMU having a little bit of difficulty trying to find those offensive gaps. UCLA working the middle, stolen immediately by the Lions, who now work downhill. Full head of steam right in the middle, a little cross all the way outside. Oberly is going to try to control in the corner. Defensive slides in for the Bruins and will take it away. Oberly is not giving up on this one, though. That one's going to go all the way nearly out of bounds to the sideline. Let's see how they'll play this one. LMU is going to try to keep it in play, and they do. Huge credit to the transition team there for LMU. Those midfielders able to keep it alive all the way down towards Cervantes. He was the assist man early on alongside Oberly. Now goes back and forth with it. Playing the corner, there's the cross to the middle, not quite in time. But a good look for the Lions. That one will dribble out of bounds and LMU will get another shot at it. Credit LMU for staying with that. It was initially great hustle by the UCLA defense getting back to break up the play that Oberly was trying to make and then LMU stayed with it, didn't let UCLA turn it into a counter opportunity and still their ball on their side of the field. CJ Neville checking in for LMU. Nathan Franco checking back in as well. And a substitution for the Bruins on their side as well. That'll be number 16, Kevin Diaz. So three fresh faces as LMU has the throw and there it is all the way towards the center. Off the chest of one of the forwards and nearly saved, but not quite in time. Got to credit the extra effort there by Narciso Cervantes. UCLA now with a long way to go to try to get it back into LMU territory. LMU's going to have something to say about it in transition. Trying to work for it at the top of the box and nearly stolen away. UCLA in a bit of a pickle trying to get it downfield. And here they go. So LMU has numbers defensively, but the Bruins are pushing. LMU facing a Bruins team that's playing with a different sense of urgency in the second half, Alex. Yeah, but LMU has done a nice job of staying steady. Feels like every time UCLA tries to, mush, tries to rush, LMU has a minimum of five players back and makes it really tough for the Bruins to generate anything. Yeah, the speed of their defensive recovery has been mighty in this matchup so far. Part of what's made UCLA have such a tough time in the transition game. 60 minutes gone by. LMU still leads one to nothing. Somehow, despite the possession time being fairly equal in this game, UCLA has still not put a shot on goal. Or really a shot at all of substance on this Lions squad. We've seen Jacob Jackson have a couple little minutes of action. UCLA is going to get a chance to work now shallow in LMU territory. But the longer stoppage will allow their offense to get set. At the same time, it will allow LMU to get into their optimal defensive formation. Preparing for the longer kick. There it is, the cross. Headed out. Trying to get it out towards the corner of the box for maybe a shot from the outside. UCLA is going to get another chance at it, though. LMU with stout defense is going to be a foot race as they try to get it in closer to the box. LMU trying to force down to the low side, and they do. Shallow angle. And Jacob Jackson ready for that one. So with that low angle shot, the goaltender's job essentially just gets to be cover off that decreasing window that you have as an offensive player. And he did just that, stood right on the post, dropped to his knees, corralled that one easy. Exactly, the defense did a great job of kind of forcing UCLA into that place and then Jackson did his part. UCLA opting for those quick start throw-ins Forcing LMU to have a little bit of a tougher time recovering, though, but their defense is still being stout. It'll be a goalie ball, and Jacob Jackson will send it away. Nearly in trouble, though. LMU's going to have to get it out of there. It's kind of LMU's first major miscue at this game, you know. Just Jackson a little bit off with the pass. 
I not, weren't totally paying attention. It slipped through and gave UCLA another shot. Well, again, we have to go back to the fact that UCLA has played a ball game so far this season. LMU has not. Yep. The slower recovery is working out who's going to take it from the corner. right on the border of being a throw-in and a goal kick, and we say throw-in. A throw-in it is indeed for number two in white for the Lions. So Dylan Shockey gets things started. UCLA Bruins steal it away pretty quickly. Now the Bruins work up top. Again, Alex, they've had trouble trying to get it started downhill. They've had some good runs but it's been when they've caught LMU by surprise. They're trying those quicker restarts to try to catch LMU's defense off guard. There's a long one all the way into the box and headed well. Not quite enough though. UCLA is still in possession with it. They work it back out. They want to reset and resettle. LMU is going to chase them all the way out to the sideline though. They've had good success so far and there's another steal. LMU is going to come away with a chance. Three on three situation. How fast can UCLA recover, they do. LMU working it in, there's the cross. And LMU is gonna have to settle and recover. Cervantes in a little bit of trouble, the two on one situation. Can he use his skill to get it out? Yes, he can, and LMU is now gonna have a chance to recover. Great job and good decision making from Narciso Cervantes to realize he was in trouble. Get the ball out and allow his offense a chance to work again, but here come the Bruins. LMU coming right back, Cervantes off the ball, stumbling again, the grass looking increasingly wet as that Marina Dew comes in. The contested ball at the midfield line, UCLA now trying to get their offense started once again. We are just about at the 65 minute mark, still one to zip LMU on top. But UCLA playing with a new fire in their belly. Jackson's gonna have to chase that one out and he does, no real danger. Looked like Bachland was there, but from afar. So as we've said, hearing footsteps, but Jacob Jackson able to corral it easy. Maybe not the best pass there as they nearly get it into trouble. Jackson's gonna air mail it out all the way down to Dylan Shockey, who's pulled down again. The officials letting him play and Shockey puts his hands up in near disbelief. Ben Raveno was kind of all over him. Raveno, excuse me. So long near. All the way back to Garces. Garces under pressure is going to have to send it over towards the middle. Contested ball. Hard played at the, f at the uh, center line. And LMU wants the possession. The officials saying it was UCLA ball. You could hear again, as we said, the few athletes in attendance advocating for their Lions squad to get the call. Not so. Dosho to Lopez. The defense will try to get things started. LMU electing for a slower start on defense at some points. Now getting now towards the center, up towards the sideline. They've handled well in the second half at the sideline. LMU certainly didn't have the numbers on that occasion and unfortunately ran in to a little bit of trouble there as CJ Neville was trying to take it all by himself through the entire defense of, L of UCLA. So Alex, things have slowed down here. They really have not as many rushes in the last few minutes. You've seen a few kind of semi opportunities where you know LMU's tried to pull off a counter attack or UCLA tried to make a rush, but it's been snuffed out fairly quickly each time. UCLA playing in the box and LMU was having none of it. You can see on your monitor, Noel Kalikskan calling potentially for a foul. It'd be a corner kick for the Bruins instead. Sixty-seven and a half minutes gone by. The Bruins now with their fourth corner kick of the match. There it is, high arcing ball towards the center. 
headed out towards the center of the box. Not out of the woods yet as LMU tries to distance it from the goal. UCLA trying to recover. Hard fought though. And another cross goes a little bit too far. A little bit too much mustard on that one, Alex. And LMU is going to get the chance to recover defensively. Bruins not done with it yet, though, as they try to get it back in towards the box. LMU's defense works really well in this area. If LMU can turn it around, the Bruins do have the numbers defensively. But again, LMU with that speed could make life difficult for them. Yeah, I've got to give UCLA a lot of credit in that aspect. I mean, they've been putting a lot of guys forward on offense, trying to generate some, some plays, some goal opportunities, which is, has the potential to leave their back line exposed. If you can get those turnovers and those counterattacks, but they've done a really nice job of dropping back in those situations where that does happen and making sure LMU doesn't get into too dangerous of a place. It takes a lot of confidence in your defense and those players to be able to rely on them to make the call and not be beat. We've seen UCLA's defense really start to come alive here in the second half, and it's denied LMU a lot of potential looks. And things are getting tangled up there. Top left of your screen on the far side. A deep in LMU territory, the officials will come in and sort it out. Again, no extracurricular activities, but they will talk things over. You can see Cody Sundquist come down for some clarification and the officials making their call and trying to get play resumed here. It'll be UCLA ball when the whistle goes. This is a precarious spot for the Lions right now. Yeah, a little bit further forward than a corner kick, so long striking distance if they want to take that angle. I think they'll go for a high cross. UCLA seemed to favor that high arcing cross and try to get it in for a header. Something similar worked for LMU for their first goal. So there it is right towards the goal and Jacob Jackson steals it away quickly. Now gonna have to recover. He'll toss it forward to Cervantes who's intercepted. But Jacob Jackson read that one all the way from the boot of the Bruins. Now he's gonna try to give his offense a chance in transition. Here they come. UCLA does have the numbers and they'll intercept it pretty immediately. Cervantes trying to play with them at the midfield line and he does. He's gonna force them to go back. So great individual defense by Narciso Cervantes who's played a lot of minutes and seen a lot of action in this game, Alex. Yeah, he's been doing it on both sides of the ball. You've seen him, he recorded the, uh, the primary assist on Brown's goal, uh, and also here on the defensive side, you see him stepping up, being aggressive, and sort of, even though that offensive rush failed, he didn't sort of take his eye off the ball and jog back. He stayed with it and forced UCLA to slow things down. Shockey with a little nod, gives the ball back to Jacob Jackson, who sends it all the way up the pitch. LMU fighting for it. UCLA trying to take it away at the sideline. I think they will. Still contested, though. This is where LMU has been so strong about disrupting UCLA's momentum. Just when UCLA thinks they'll have an opportunity and a steal, LMU's defense in transition, those midfielders will come in and swoop it away. Cervantes, again, disrupting the momentum. Kicks it out of bounds, but even in a situation like that, Alex, you know you're not going to get the steal, but you can at least kick your opponent back just a little bit and slow their roll, ice the kicker, if you will. Yeah, exactly. Throwing off the rhythm can be so important, especially in a situation where they, where the need to get a goal for UCLA is just increasing with every second. They're going to get more aggressive and try to play even faster, and if you can throw off that pace, really important. So Ronaldo Brown checking back in. The lone goal scorer in this contest. Holds the first and only Lions goal this season. Of course, we're still in game number one for them. Here's Bockland with the throw in. All the way back to Longmere. Garces now. Something Brown did a lot in the first is he did force the issue because he would put so much pressure on that back line for UCLA that they had to make quick decisions, but they weren't necessarily ready at the midfield to receive the ball. Bit of a full court press, if you will, for Ronaldo Brown. So UCLA trying to work it in towards the box. They'll have to work from the perimeter, tiptoeing on the sideline and they'll keep it in bounds. So Bachland with the good footwork. You can see Ronaldo is plenty rested, sprinting out 
to meet his, his man. Ronaldo Brown, let's see how he plays on the defensive side. Again, three fouls in this game early on, but a hard defensive effort as well. He had some good stops in the first. There's the cross. Shallow in the box. Cross again, not gonna go. So Jacob Jackson will take this one. So interesting decision there for the Bruins to try to take two hierarchy crosses in a row despite the fact that they had a man in the middle. Yeah, but actually a pretty good opportunity there for them. A couple of LMU defenders fell asleep, I think, for just a split second. And UCLA had that opportunity, but not able to quite take advantage of it. So Cer Cervantes will take a break. Williams will check back in as well. So some substitutions for the Lions trying to get some fresh legs. Potentially fatigue sitting in, Alex. It was a long off season. These guys may not be used to playing the full 90 minutes. I'm sure they will have scrimmaged amongst themselves, but this is their first real opponent in over a year. Yeah, they did have they did have uh, one scrimmage last week against uh, Hope International University, but 23 different players played in that contest, and that was just sort of a way to get as many different bodies out there as possible. Oh, we, do we have a yellow card here? Yes, we do, indeed. The yellow card will be called against the Lions. I believe from my vantage point it was Bastian Oberly. Are they going to wave off the card? No, they won't. So it will be a yellow card against Bastian Overly, coming in at the 73rd minute. Bit of an unforced error there. It was just on the pass reception. Overly got a little too physical and got tangled up with, I believe, Riley Furch. The second yellow card of the match, one for the Lions, one for the Bruins earlier in the first. And the officials, I think, going over to confer with the sideline and offer some clarification. Perhaps Ryan Jordan offering a little bit of objection, or wanting more, I should say. hear Paul Crumpy on the field mic saying, I don't understand how that was a yellow. You didn't give one for the other. So Crumpy also asking for clarification and the yellow card will stand as we get all things sorted out here. So Crumpy voicing his frustration with the officials, but play will resume. I apologize for any language that may have come through on the broadcast. So it'd be Riley Furch who will take the free kick and air mills it away right to the center. LMU is gonna gobble that one up, but the Bruins might get another chance to repossess and, and try to attack again. In came Ronaldo Brown ready to Swipe at it. He's had some good takeaways in the first. Let's see what he can do here in the second. Still playing early minutes. Up now to 44 minutes total in this matchup. And he'll have a good one-on-one -on -one opportunity here as Bachlin kicks it away. And again, UCLA relying on their goalkeeper having to resettle and reset to get their offense going again. LMU will Head that one out of bounds. Again, slowing the roll. The Bruins will take it back, but the Bruins, again, starting to struggle a little bit in transition. Yeah, one thing I will say about this is just intercepted passes. I don't mean like passes that got deflected or anything. The passes that were kicked by one team and just straight up ended up on the foot of the other team. I'm not sure. I can't remember the last time I've seen this many intercepted passes in one game. It's been a heavily contested matchup towards the circle around that midfield line. Jacob Jackson's gonna kick it away. We'll get another chance for some back and forth action here, Alex. And Dylan Shockey's gonna take it. He'll have the throw in for the Lions. 75 minutes now gone by. The clock winding down and LMU's offense has slowed down a little bit. They've had some good looks. Still 11 total shots in the matchup. Six of which on goal. The Bruins still looking for their first either way of the night. 
despite possession time being split pretty equally among both teams. Alex, what do the Lions need to do here to start forcing the envelope again? I think it just starts with being steady on the defensive line and trying to um, take those counterattacks whenever possible. Although I will say with a one nothing lead, we are getting into that phase of the game, you know, a little less than 15 minutes left, where you might start holding back a little bit, just focusing on the defense, focusing on preventing that goal rather than scoring another. Of course, if the scoring opportunity comes along, you want to take it and take advantage of it and go for that goal. But the most important thing right now, of course, not letting up one. Ronaldo Brown down to lace up his boot. And at the same time, Alex, if LMU lets up a little bit, you could potentially see UCLA, and likely we will see UCLA try to force the issue again, as you said, in those final 15 minutes. So LMU's defense is going to have to be wide awake, not allow any good opportunities for the Bruins. So here we go again. UCLA trying to get it over the midline. And start off some offense as the clock is winding down. Still plenty of soccer to go. But LMU is going to force the issue early on and put on that full pitch pressure, we'll call it. UCLA trying to get it into the middle. Booted away right away by Dosho. All the way back into UCLA territory. And Ronaldo Brown making him work for it at the sideline. How about that from the new line who's had a heck of a performance tonight. Another good steal for the Lions secondary. All the way down. They won't have the numbers. And trying for a foul call. It will be a yellow card. You could hear the shouts in support of the call from the LMU sideline. And as we said, the few student athletes here in attendance socially distanced, of course will be a yellow call card awarded, a team yellow card. So that one coming in the 77th minute at the 15th second for those of you keeping score at home. Still one zip, LMU on top, 12 shots on goal for the Lions. Still zero for the Bruins. The yellow card was awarded to Pablo Greenlee. Ball up in the middle, and Justin Garces' shouts of disdain there from the LMU sideline as they wanted the call. Paul Crumpy visibly upset on the sideline as well. LMU will want that one back. Yeah, I think they wanted a corner on that rather than the goal kick that ended up being the result. Yeah, LMU has had just one corner kick in this matchup. UCLA has had four. It'll be a foot race, but Jacob Jackson will come and dive for it, putting himself at risk to get that one. We've got a Bruin down, but he'll get right back on up. Riley Furch back on his feet. Out towards the midline, UCLA. Trying to nab a possession as the clock is winding down. As we said, still plenty of time to go, but LMU doesn't want to let up just yet. Gerardo Lopez playing up quite a bit. You don't often see him play that high up, especially in transition. Fantastic player, though, out of Loyola High School. He's well acquainted with this Lions squad now after a couple years. Big shot all the way down. Cross will be a little bit too much. LMU will get another shot at it in the middle. High arcing ball may have... Kind of shot themselves in the foot with that one. Is again, Alex, back and forth we go to try to maintain possession. UCLA looks like they're going to come away with it, but they're going to have to settle defensively before trying to get it over. Yeah, I give credit to uh, number 13 for LMU, Jaden Fidelak, on that one. Getting in the way, being aggressive, making things tough. And LMU with another steal. It'll be a three on three situation if they play their cards right. They've got the help side defense coming from the Bruins. and. Help of themselves coming. Ball towards the center of the box. No. Justin Garces will dive and save it as they got into the penalty area. But a good offensive push there from the Lions. Didn't put one on goal, but certainly had the Bruins hearing footsteps. UCLA with the clock winding down as we're now in the 80th minute, just 10 to go. Surprised they're not pushing a little bit more. 
And there's the push, but again, when you have players like Dosho and Lopez that are intercepting pretty much anything that's thrown at him, it makes it difficult to get it down the pitch when you don't have the numbers. You know, it's understandable that UCLA might be a little hesitant to, to push if they know that LMU is going to intercept it right away. Substitution for both teams. Coming off the of Bruins, number 19, Luke Capone, number 23. The substitutions Cervantes. on both Cervantes. sides. Here's number 8, Narciso Cervantes. Cervantes coming back in for LMU. We've seen him play quite a few minutes, 74 so far in this matchup. Now coming back in in the 81st minute. UCLA will air mail one away, all the way down to midfield, contested. Let's see what the Lions can do. A little slide will award it back to UCLA. Crumpy wanted that one. The Lions defense nearly in trouble there. Called for a foul. Lions not happy about that foul call. I think the foul's against the Bruins, actually. Oh, you're right, it was, Alex, because Jacob Jackson will get the chance to take it away. I initially thought it had been called on the lines as well, but then you saw the Bruins trotting back. And yeah, it looked like Dosho had had his hands up asking for clarification, but you're right, Alex, it was called against the Bruins. A long, hierarchy pass for Jackson. Cervantes now in the corner of the box. What can he do? Two-on-one situation, hits the turf, but gets it back out to Dylan Shockey. Shockey's got Cervantes on the help side. They'll try to corral that one back from the Bruins, and they do. Now up towards the center. There's the cross, and not quite enough. Bastion Overly settles the ball back out. UCLA putting on some tough defense now, making LMU have to pass quickly and accurately. Dehaney Williams was all but tied up, and the officials will call that one. You could see his... Williams went forward to receive the pass. He lurched back as his jersey had uh, was grabbed. So nearly 83 minutes gone by. LMB still leads one to zero, but in the closing stages, they're trying to force a final few pushes. If they can end up with more than they will. I don't think LMU is gonna let up here until the final stages, if they can help it. Now in these free kick kind of situations, you always gotta go for the goal regardless of the score. Long free kick in and nearly. From our situation, it was at the right windage. It was going in the right area just a little bit too far, if maybe by a few inches. Bastion Overly with a mighty kick off the boot. Number 26, Tommy Silva. Overly, he's the guy you want in those free kicks and those set piece kind of situations because he's so good at ball placement and put one pretty well there. The Lions couldn't quite get around on it. So Silva, who was shown the yellow card early in the first half, checks back in for the Bruins. It'll be a contested ball around midfield. Little slide gives UCLA a chance at it. But Shockey and Cervantes are going to have something to say about it. Oh, nearly Cervantes could have had a run. But it was intercepted well by the UCLA defense. Bachland was all over it, and now Bachland gets tripped up. So quick foul. And LMU is going to want to try to play it away. And visible frustration there is Noel Kaliskan thought he had it. The foul was called on LMU, so of course he won't be allowed to do that. The ball will go right on back to the Bruins. Bachlin, back and forth we go. Back to the center. Closing stages of this game, the Bruins looking to try to equalize if they can help it. Dehaney Williams trying to keep it in bounds, but not quite. The Bruins quick with the throw in. LMU really not giving them much to work with. You can see they're not playing super collapsed, but at the same time, they can recover very quickly. There's a big, mighty shot, but that one goes a few yards too wide. Jacob Jackson shaded over for it, but didn't need to worry too, too much. Still not credited with a save in this game, although he's seen quite a bit of action. Justin Garces, on the other hand, has five. Let one of them in. 
pretty remarkable that it took until the 86th minute for UCLA to finally register a shot on the board. And you can see that, that under normal circumstances, that's probably not the greatest look in the world, but in a situation like this one, they've been really struggling to put shots on net. It'll take anything you can get and maybe force that one a little bit. Absolutely, Alex. At this point, you're going to want any opportunity you can have. It'll be another stoppage and a foul called. And now, LMU at UCLA getting into it verbally a little bit. It was Andrew Pauly who was having words with Cervantes, Lopez, and Oberly. The official sorts things out. It'll be a free kick for UCLA with a pretty straight on angle at the goal. Jacob Jackson shading what would be his right side now, collecting back towards the center. Let's see what UCLA does. They'll take the shot themselves and knocked away by Jacob Jackson taking flight. Extends the arms like Superman to knock that one out of danger. So Jacob Jackson, if you're going to have a first save, that's a heck of a way to do it. Yeah, and he played that really well. Kind of, he left that side of the goal exposed, almost baiting the Bruins into taking that shot and trusted his recovery speed to be able to get over there in time. The goalkeeper's mind game's working on that occasion, and UCLA trying to head it in, but I think they were just a little bit too far leaned back. It was a good look. Again, Alex, any look is a good look at this point. That'll be their second shot. One on goal, obviously, is. Jacob Jackson now has a save credited on the evening as well. So UCLA all of a sudden starting to force the issue a little bit. LMU's defense still playing well, but allowing little gaps here and there. Again, late in the game, you can't let the physicality of the matchup get to you and slow down because then your opponents will hurt you. We've got to remember this is a very high-powered Pac-12 team in UCLA that is capable of winning a lot of games this season. Yeah. Only went six and nine and three last year, but here's a crazy stat for you, Jonathan. They played six top ten teams. Wow. Literally one third of their games against teams that were at the time ranked in the top ten. Yeah, talk about strength of schedule and not I mean, the polar opposite of padding the stat sheet. So this team is hungry for a win. UCLA going for it. Again, back and forth and back and forth we go. UCLA is capable of winning in the WCC. They took down San Francisco three to zip on Monday. After a few days off, if come on down back to Los Angeles to try to take on the Lions. LMU leads one to zero. Ronaldo Brown credited with the goal early on, as we mentioned, Bastian Oberly with the secondary assist and Cervantes with the primary assist. UCLA kicks it away all the way back up towards the center of the pitch and knocked out immediately. So again, the free throw, excuse me, the throw in, not the free throw, wrong sport. Center of the pitch, UCLA trying to create some offense in the final minutes. They've had some good shots, Alex. They really have, there's been even more aggressive sending even more guys forward. Something we've been doing the entire half and just really picking it up as a plate. Lopez fighting for it. You can hear Crumpy calling for the yellow. It would just be a foul. But Lopez doing a good job there of not giving up, driving the legs, making sure that one stays alive. And he'll give his chance. Another shot it is. We are in the 89th minute. The seconds winding down in this one. Referees even stopping the clock to make sure LMU doesn't take this kick too slowly to run things out. So LMU got it deep into Bruins territory, but not quite far enough in front of Ronaldo Brown, who was looking for his second of the night. Kicked all the way down once again, and I think at this point LMU will just try to wind down the clock. 20 seconds left in this one. UCLA will have the free the uh, throw in. Almost did it again, Alex. Hey, you can call me a lot of basketball this year. It's understandable. <laughs> Seven, and that'll all but do it in this one. UCLA is going to try for one last attempt, but LMU's defense in transition has been too good this evening and will not allow it 
Alex, the Lions start off in winning ways here in 2021. A great win for LMU. Here's another weird stat for you, Jonathan. Gave you one a few minutes ago. Here's another crazy one. This is LMU's third win 